In this example here, I have two gases kind of producing another gas, that decomposing. By the end, in this equilibrium, I have a mixture of all three gases. Okay? Imagine a flask filled with a colorless gas, a purple gas, and I don't really know what HI is, but it's probably colorless. How do you think they're going to find these concentrations? Not very easily. There are little things that can do the color for us. So actually the purple one, <coughs> pardon me, that I too, I can figure out, I can put it in a colorometer, literally colorometer, and it tells me how, how intense that purple hue is. Like basically how thick that cloud is. Okay, and from that I can calculate the uh, concentration of I2. Imagine if there's more purple in there, it'll be a darker purple. If there's less purple in there, it'll be a lighter purple gas. Does that make sense? So fine, I could find this one, but I can't find the other two. So we have to do a bit of math. I know how much I've dumped in my, dump, in my, in my bathtub. That's easy. I start with it. I put it in. I know how much is in there. But when I'm forming it, it's a bit harder to decipher. Everybody okay with that? So we have to do this mathematical thing called ice tables. So scrolling over here, you will find that. Here's another equilibrium setup. We talked about this one yesterday. It's your alcohol and your carboxylic acid. Do you remember this? And you put them together and you get these lovely smelling esters. But those lovely, and a bit of water. But that, those lovely smelling esters very quickly go back into the starting products. And then the rate of the forward and the rate of reverse happen. And we end up with an equilibrium. Are you okay with that? So this company is making an ester. And they know that they dump into their flask. 7.71 moles per liter. This is all concentration, okay? So if they give you a mass, I'd have to take the mass divided by a molar mass to get a number of moles, take the number of moles divided by the volume to get the concentration. Remember all those chem 20 concepts, mass stuff? So I'd have to do that because this is all about concentration. Why? Because these square brackets are concentration in our K. So I've got to work towards concentration. Okay, so the first thing about a table is that it is a concentration. It's called an ice table because I'm going to talk about the initial, then I'm going to talk about the change, then I'm going to talk about the equilibrium. See that? Ice table. And I've even called, seen it called a rice table because you have to put the reaction at the top. Fine. I don't call them rice tables. I say write a reaction. It'd be dumb if you didn't. And then we're going to do an ice table. Okay? So in this ice table, somebody's put in, or in this reaction, pardon me, initially, somebody's put in 7.71 moles per liter. Write that down. Oops, this pencil's not working for me anymore, so I'm going to switch moles per liter. Okay? And they put in some alcohol, 7.37 moles per liter. So that's what the question says. The question says up here, talks about when 7.71 moles in a one liter flask, see that? 7.71 moles of alcohol in a one liter flask and 7.37 moles of carboxylic acid in that one liter flask. So moles per liter, moles per liter. Reacting in a beaker. They found that 4.80 moles of the ester was made after it reached equilibrium. So they were able to take out how much ester, or figure out how much ester was made. So, oh, oh, I hate it when that happens. So back to our ice table. They put this and this in the flask. And they found that at equilibrium. Now this is different from the, exper the questions we did with you know, our warm-up today and different than the things we did yesterday. Because yesterday I just gave you all these equilibriums and you just plugged them in. And now I'm saying, hey, that's really unrealistic to find all your equilibrium concentrations. So you've got to set up this ice table. So initial, initial, I know what I dumped in. And I can normally find the concentration of one of the things I made. Everybody understand 
why I need to do this, and how I set it up. Okay, so I have initially put in, my, like my next step is to decide that I've initially put in no and none of that either. Right, dumped into one into the bathtub only. Everybody okay with that? So I'm reading into that equation and I'm assuming, because it doesn't say I put any in, I haven't any yet. So therefore, if I started with nothing and I ended with 0 0.480, I must have produced or added 4.80 to the system. Everybody okay with that? And if I made by the way, reminding ourselves about Chem 20, that this is saying one mole of this and one mole of that react together. And I make, for every one mole and one mole, I make one mole and one mole. Well, what if I don't make one mole? What if I make 4.8 moles? Okay, so what if I don't make one Lego airplane? What if I make 4.8 Lego airplanes, right? And I'm supposed to have a one-to-one -one ratio, so 4.8 to 4.8. So if this increased by 4.8, then this must have increased by 4.8. Get it? And therefore, at equilibrium, 0 plus 4.8 is, well, 4.8. So at equilibrium, I now know two concentrations. And if it's a one to one to one to one, and I've made 4.8, I must have started with 4.8. I must have used up 4.8. If I make one, I start with one. If I make 4.8, I start with 4.8. But it's no longer starting with 4.8, it's now using up 4.8. I have a whole bucket of Lego. The question is, if I made only four airplanes, I must have only used the pieces for four airplanes. Okay? Even though I have a whole bin. Yes? So if it were a 1 to 2 ratio, and you started with 4.8, would you end up with 9.6? Or would you? If I had a 1 to 2 ratio, yes. Okay. That is true. Okay. Yes. So the change is all about my mole ratio. That's super important to remember. Many students forget that, and I will say it over and over and over again. The change line in our ice table has to do with mole ratio. So if I've, made, if I've used up 4.8 and I started with 7, then at equilibrium, I'm going to have 2.51 kicking around. So I've got a whole box of Lego. I used up 4.8 pieces. What's the remainder left in my box? Does that make sense? Who has a big bin of Lego at home? Just Max? And Karen? We have a whole Lego room. My, my boys decided to share a bedroom so that one of their bedrooms could be converted into a Lego room. <laughs> I kid you not, it has Lego shelves and Lego decal and Lego closets and it's Lego. It's Lego City. And they have a whole bucket of Lego and if they've made one thing, they still have a whole bunch of Lego left over. And if they made four and a half things, they still have a bunch of Lego left over. But they must have used up some of it. So if they've used up 4.8 worth of pieces to make those 4.8 airplanes. And left over in the bucket will be 2.9. Does that make sense? So 2.91 is left over, and 2.51 is left over. This is just like, you know, elementary school. Bottom number minus next number, or top number minus, bottom number is that. Mm, 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 zero plus that is that, zero plus that is that. And now I have all my equilibrium concentrations. And so now I can take my equilibrium constant, which is products, right, products, divided by reactants. Everybody okay, or do I need to write the expression with square brackets? Everybody know it? And so I can plug that in and plug that into my products. And if it had to be squared, it would square it, right? And plug this in and plug this in to the bottom. And then tapity tap in your calculator and you get 
3.08, and again, no units, because all the moles per liters cancelled out. Yes? So if we were doing an experiment, how would we calculate the change of the... You use your mole, because, I, because the blue is what I start with. So I knew that my products, I had 4.8 moles per liter. So it must have changed. If you've made that much at the end, you must have created that much throughout the process. Okay. If you start, especially if you start at zero. Okay, so I had nothing. I formed 4.8 product, 4.8 compounds. Mm -hmm. I must have changed it by 4.8 compounds. Okay, and then from the from the ratio, you can figure out the change for everybody. Does that make sense, you guys? Ice tables? And then just to point out again from yesterday, this is a very big number. It's greater than one. So that must mean in this fraction, the top is bigger than the bottom to be greater than one. And if the top is big and the top are products, then the products are bigger than the reactants. So it tells you that the products are favored or that this arrow is bigger than this arrow or that the percent yield my pens are all dying on me. My percent yield must be greater than 50%. More than half of my stuff must be making esters. Okay, so a reminder. Wait, so if it's greater than one, it's a product. Yeah, greater than one, because that means a fraction. This top has to be bigger than that bottom and the topper products. If K is greater than one, products are favored. Because big over little, and those are products over reactants. Any questions before I scroll down? Jordan? You good? Okay. So the steps are there too. We've talked about all of them. So we write our equation. Remember those equilibrium signs? So it'll take you a while to get out of the habit of putting that lovely normal arrow. Okay, we can't do that anymore. It exists both ways. So you're going to have to put those signs in there. And then you need to set up your ice table. And then you write your expression like we did yesterday, square brackets, symbols over symbols. And then you're going to plug in the units from the equilibrium into your K expression, from the equilibrium column, equilibrium row, I should say. That's a row. Okay, and then you need to answer with units, and the units are different for every K. Okay. Okay, so we did this yesterday. Right? We wrote K expressions, we plugged in numbers, and we played around with units. We, I didn't bother to do that because that's kind of straightforward, but you saw them yesterday. Okay, so really this is the new bet for today, are these ice tables. All right, <clears throat> I'm going to just, uh, so we talked about that already yesterday, and I'm going to talk about the rest of that later. Okay, so I want you to, you've done that yesterday, because this is slightly different. In fact, I should probably push pause, because this is going to just confuse